What's up everyone, this is Dr. Webb here. Today I wanted to talk about uh, the reason why I did not become a military physician. Um, as you may or may not know, I was in the military for eight years in the Air Force. I went in at age 17 and was a combat medic. I was a LVN, licensed vocational nurse, and also a medical technician. Um, I went to Iraq in 2005, uh, right outside Baghdad, and um, was a combat medic there. Um, so I went in when I was 17, and I did majority of my college degree um, on active duty. I went to school at nighttime, I went to school on the weekends, I went to school, uh, internet courses, whatever I could to complete my degree. Um, I did that uh, while working uh, full time on active duty Air Force. That was probably the, one of the most challenging uh, times in my kind of uh, career because I had to juggle active duty obligations, responsibilities. I was a uh, staff sergeant, which means I had troops under me and uh, juggling going to school full time. And the way I did it, I went to school at, um, in the daytime and I worked at nighttime in the ICU. Um, and I would get off work around 7 a.m. in the morning and I would go to school from eight to maybe one or two and then go back to work at six or so. Uh, so I did that for a number of years and it took me seven years to get my degree. A lot of people ask me, why didn't you go back into the military? Why, don't, why are you, aren't you a military physician? And there are a number of reasons why I decided not to. Number one, um, financially, that's the reason why. As a military physician, depending on your specialty, um, as a orthopedic surgeon or a dermatologist or internal medicine doctors, um, you don't get paid as much in the military versus being a civilian. For example, average military doctor makes $150,000 a year or $200,000. I would say that's probably depending on your rank and your time in service. Um, as a civilian, you can make $450,000, $500,000 on up. And the, uh, your pay is kind of unlimited. In the military, you're capped on a certain, on a certain pay. So the way um, I came to that decision was this right here. Uh, I'm going to draw on this, um, on this board here. So like I said, 150000 and this writing on this board here is kind of uh, iffy, but... 150,000 and the military, we'll just type military T A. This is kind of harder than what I thought. And then um, I would say on average, starting off, a orthopedic surgeon and the civilian side makes 450. And that 150000 is with um, your bonuses, it's with your BAH, which is your housing allowance, with your clothing allowance, with your food allowance, um, 150000 So that's a difference of 300000 300 k So, and this is one of the reasons why I did not go back in because this difference here that you can make as a civilian, um, this 300,000 can be used to pay back your student loans. Most medical schools, students come out of medical school with about $200,000 in their student loans. Um, Georgetown, where I went to medical school, was pretty expensive. Um, I came out with, um, or it was about $80,000 per year on average. So, if you decide not to go in the military, and you decide to go as a civilian, um, that $300,000 that you will make a difference, you can use this to pay back your student loans in one year versus having to pay back four years of the, um, uh, the military. Uh, they usually do it one to one. Um, but I've even met some, um, some military guys who owe eight, nine years because they did the military academy or they did uh, Military West Point. Uh, there is one stipulation to this. I would say that um, this 300,000 um, or this 450,000 right here, 
this depended on it, this depends on your specialty. But if you go in pediatrics, this may not be a reason why you should consider going the civilian route because pediatricians don't make that much. They maybe make one hundred fifty thousand. So, or internal medicine, you may make up two hundred fifty thousand. So, you may want to consider the military route. Um, so, my uh, second reason reasoning was that. Um, Number two was deployments. Deployments in the military can be anywhere from four months to six months. And deployment means that you will be sent to a war zone or a non-war zone. Uh, I was sent to Iraq in 2005 and I was there for about five months. I don't want to do that with, um, if I had a, if a, with my family and leave my family behind. So that can be very challenging when you have to leave your family, I and mean, you go to somewhere else for five months, six months, and the army sometimes is a year or 18 months. Uh, so that's another reason why I did not uh, go back in the military. The third reasoning is that uh, they can control where you practice medicine. Say for instance, I wanted to go to Florida after I get done with my training um, and practice medicine. In the military, they tell you, they say, no, you're going to Texas or you're going to Oklahoma or to Mississippi, they can basically tell you where you're going to be practicing medicine. And I didn't really like that aspect of them controlling where I want to practice medicine. Number four is the, your training. Um, once after residency, say for instance you wanted to do a fellowship, the military does make it a little bit more challenging to uh, do a fellowship. Uh, there are only a select few, few slots for doing a fellowship so if you wanted to specialize in um, pediatric general surgery after your general surgery residency, it may be hard to do a fellowship right after. They may want you to go and practice medicine or go to the, uh, be a flight officer. So it just makes it a little bit more challenging, especially if you know exactly what you want to do. And I, I would say the, um, those are kind of the top reasons why I chose not to go in the military. Number one is because of pay. Number two, because of deployments. Number three, because they can dictate where you uh, do your, um, your training. And once you get done with your training, um, where you will be practicing medicine. So, but there are a lot of advantages to going into the military. Um, the health benefits, the uh, there's dental benefits for you and your family. There's, <clears throat> you, you, you do receive some of the, the world's best um, in um, technology as well as uh, training while you're in the military. The experience that you get uh, is probably unparalleled. You have to put this on your CV, and then everybody likes, um, it, it speaks very highly of you when you apply to a job and, it's, and you say, hey, I've been in the Army for six years. It looks really good. Uh, but those uh, pros did not kind of outweigh my cons of the military, and that's the reason why I decided um, not to go back in the military. If you guys have any more questions, email me at overcomingtheoddsbook at gmail.com or contact me on my website, TonyoWebMD.com. See you next time.